Hello everyone to my another DeepQ learning tutorial. So in my previous tutorial we implemented dwelling DeepQ network model and we saw that this way our agent improved slightly. Now it's time to implement prioritized experience replay which was introduced in 2015 by Tom Shaw. Paper idea is that some experiences might be more important than others for our training but might occur less frequently. Because we sample the batch uniformly, I mean selecting the experiences randomly, these rich experiences that occur rarely have practically no chance to be selected. That's why with prioritized experience to replay, we will try to change the sampling distribution by using a criteria to define the priority for each tuple of experience. So we want to take in priority experience where there is a big difference between our prediction and the target since it means that we have a lot of learn about it. So in priority experience replay method we are putting priority to the experiences of each replay buffer as you can see. So here is our experience replay buffer. We sample it to batch of experiences and only then we train our DPQ network agent. But we can't do greedy prioritization here because it will lead to always training the same experiences that have big priority and then will be overfitting our agent. So we'll use stochastic prioritization which generates uh, the probability of being chosen for a replay buffer or replay batch. Therefore, during each time step, we'll get a batch of samples which, uh, with batch prob probability distribution and we'll train our network on it. But we still have a problem here. With normal experience replay buffer, it was before called a DECU, we use a stochastic update tool. Therefore, the way that we sample the experiences must match the underlying distribution they came from. When we have a normal DQ experience, we select our experiences in a normal distribution. Simply, we put and, and then we select our experiences randomly. There is no bias because each experience has the same chance to be taken, so we can update our weights normally. But because we use priority sampling, purely random sampling is abundant. Therefore, I'll introduce uh, a bias toward high priority samples here in my tutorial, so they have more chances to be selected. So this time the implementation will be a little bit fancier than before. First of all, we can just implement a priority experience replay method by sorting all the experiences replay buffers according to their priorities. This will be not efficient. We need to use another data structure instead of sorting an array, an so-called an unsorted sum tree. So an unsorted sum tree is a binary tree that is a tree with only a maximum of two children of each node. The leaf leaves the uh, deepest nodes. So here's sorry, here is the tree. The leaves contain the priority values, and the data array that points to leaves contain the experiences. So this way, for example, here is our data, and here is our scene sum tree, and here is our indexes of our sum tree, and here is the leaves. And each leaf contains a priority score of on experience. So we we will create the memory object that will contain our sum tree and data. So I will use a more one whole sum tree code. Uh, it the link will be added in the video subscription or in my website. So first we'll create a sum tree object class. So here I already have a created a product expense replay method. So I only will open it. So I will not create it from zero because this would be a waste of time. So I will try to slightly uh, explain what uh, changes here. So first we want to build a tree with all nodes equal to zero. So we initialize the data with all values equal to zero here. So for example, capacity or data pointer. 
starts from zero and here is the tree we define the number of lead nodes final nodes that contain experiences so with this command uh, line we generate the tree with all nodes values equal to zero to understand this calculation we can draw a scheme seam so i'll open a pinta again as before in my previous tutorial and what would be easier easiest way to draw it is we take a zero i'll need to make it bigger for example no 40 40 so yeah and i would like to sorry not like that i would like to cut it here's the cutter i cut the zero and i will simply make a tree as it was there just like that and a few more zeros here sorry if it's not that pretty as you would like it to be but that's my drawing experiences and now i need to draw a lines some some kind of lines So here it is. I draw a connections here, just like that. I say I, I will say it again. I'm sorry if it's not that pretty as you would like it to be. So you can imagine that, that this is our sum tree, and here we are in a binary node. Each node has maximum two children, so two x size of leaf capacity i mean one root node so to calculate all nodes uh, parent nodes will be equal to capacity minus one and the leaf nodes will be equal to capacity finally then we define our data that contains the experiences so the size of our data is capacity we can return to our code here second we'll define add function called here uh, that will add our priority score in the sum tree leaf and add the experiences in the data so i think this is the line we, we are looking while putting new data to our tree we will fold the leaves from left to right so first that what we do is we look at what index we want to put the experiences yeah so we here get the index so we can draw it here as before sorry i'll remove this oh no how how to remove nice nice it crashed how i can show this for you so i'm back here and i installed a little different painting software which is uh simpler to use for me and maybe it won't crash so we are talking about my tree and there is our tree and we are i think i was stop talking about how our tree will lo look like while we start filling it so here is i think a uh, delete delete okay and I did no 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 it's again something okay i'll choose here here and that's my delete strategy so here will be my three three let's make it smaller maybe 100 100 okay Three index index it's quite fine three index here uh, so while adding new information to our tree we are doing three steps here and we update data frame so from from here we update the leaf from here this function will be created well 
probably later and and we shift our pointer to the right by one so data pointer plus one and if we reach the capacity limit we go back to first index we write it and uh, again so as i said next we create a function to update the leaf priority score and propagate the change through the tree so we are doing this in a while loop and we create a, then we create this function in update function first what we do is we calculate priority change so here we calculate priority change from our new priority we subtract our previous priority score and we all write our priority with new priority after that we propagate the change to the tree in a while loop in this while loop and here i'll draw now how our tree looks with six leaves so it will be a little bit different but i'll try to do that so the number in this tree are the indexes not the priority values so here we want to access the line above the leaves so for example if we are in a leaf at index 6 we updated the priority score we need to then to update the index 2 node last step is to update our tree leaf with calculated change where is well where it will be equal to self tree from true to plus change so that's it next we must build a function to get a leaf from our tree so we'll build a function to get the leaf index priority value of that leaf and experience associated with that leaf index uh where's the function here's the update function we used and here is the leaf get leaf function and what this function does is that it's simply storing zero for example to the priority sum and this six storing priority for experience for example this will be the sixth experience priority in this get leaf function uh, in this while true here we are looping our code in a while loop first thing we do we found our left and right child indexes we keep repeating the action to find our leaf until we find it when we know our parent leaf index we calculate our data index and finally we return our leaf index our leaf priority and data stored in according leaf index at the end is total priority function so this function will be used to return the root node simply that's it and now we have finished constructing our sum tree object next we will build a memory object writing this memory i relied on code from link on my page so same as before we'll create the memory object here we define hyperparameters here for example is parameter that we use to avoid some experiences to have zero probability of being taken there's parameter we use to make a tree or trade-off between taking only experience with high priority and sampling randomly and this is an important sampling uh, parameter from initial value increasing up to the one so this is the most used and need to know parameters and we can move forward before creating a tree function which is composed of a sum tree that contains the priority score at his leaf and data in array now differently from our previous tutorials we won't use dq because at each time step our experiences index changes by one we prefer to use a simple array and to overwrite it when our memory is full next we define a function to store a new experience in our tree so this will be store function uh, each new experience will have a score of maximum priority and it will be then improved when we use the experiences to train our agent 
experiences for example in card pole game would be state action reward next state and done so we are defining our star function here to use it next i mean in this star function we search for max priority on our leaf nodes that contain experiences if we can't find any priority in our tree we set a max priority as absolute error upper in, in our case one then we store this priority and experiences to our memory tree elsewise we store our experience with maximum priority we can find so next we are creating a sample function i think you uh, here which will be used to pick batch from our tree memory which will be used to train our model first we sample a mini batch of n size the range from zero to priority total into priority ranges then a uh, value is uniformly sampled from each range then we search in the sum tree for the experiences where priority score corresponds to the retrieved sample value and finally then here is the batch update function. We create a function to update the priority on the tree. So simply what this is what this function does. And that's it. We created our priority, prioritized experience replay. Two functions will be used. Two classes, I mean. And now I finished this. And don't worry, everything will be uploaded to GitHub. So you could download this code. So now. We know how our priorities experience play method works, so I will store our created sum tree and mem tree to pair.py script and we'll import this script with simple import function. So right now I will okay remind me later I don't need this. So now I will uh, copy code from my previous tutorial. I will Rename it to card poll per, I think. Rename it and we can open it with Sublime. So, wh what I told before that I will import this. So, from, from per import, import everything here. So, this is the simple way to import everything. So what we'll do here, where we initialize our memory, instead of, yeah, we here had a DQ. So right now I'll use a different method. So I'll write a memory size where we initialize our memory. So it will be some kind of memory size equal to 10,000. And I'll create a self dot memory in our upper case it will be memory and dq of my memory size so now we would like to choose if we want to use this or not so i will simply add a new line here so self use your text experience replay method or not and i will set it to true in, a, in this way note that this full memory size will be stored in ram memory and if you have too large number here you might get out of your computer memory so while implementing this method uh, all the functions stay same as before only a few of them changes but keep in mind that don't set this too large because on windows it's okay uh, while training it it will crash but if you are on linux you might hit limit of your ram and simply you'll need to just reboot your computer so that's it so remember function i think it also changes a little bit so this will be okay there might be problems again with yeah so what i'll do here i'll write if self dot use per i will write that i will use self dot memory memory dot store 
store and here will be my experience and here will be our else function and now I will simply do it like that so there shouldn't be any indention problems so that's simple we use a self use per parameter to choose if we use or we won't use a prioritized experience replay method so as i already said next more will change our replay function the way we sample our mini batches we take them from per memory or from dq list if we take our mini batches from per we must recalculate absolute errors and update our memory with it so so here is my replay and right now I, I can remove this I don't need this anymore just like that and all that the same way if self use per what I'll do is that I'll I need to get a tree ID IDX IDX and mini batch and it will be equal to self memory sample memory dot sample and here is self batch size this one and here is my else function and in this else function we will use same. No, I I can't write it like that. I I, I just remembered like that. Don't worry, I will add uh, comments later for you guys. Don't worry. So mini batch will be equal to random self, random sa sample, and here will be self memory, and here will be a minimum of len of self memory self dot memory just like that and here will be self batch size and of course i think i need to add one more of this so that's it and i already told i think that i need to add target old so it's a duplicate of our method so target old will be equal to numpy array of our target target just like that one more thing to change I need to add here on if statement it will be somewhere here between this else so if self use per what we do is that we update our absolute error absolute absolute errors we update our absolute errors and it will be equal to numpy absolute and here I add a target dot old of I and minus target target I just like that and after this line we update it self memory and batch or not like that batch dot batch update and here we write on tree index index and absolute errors so our run function doesn't change but i think i, I need to add here i need to add here something like that uh, I'm not sure how to call this but okay I'll add it if self use per and I can write it that per will be equal to per like that and I'll just add and here will be per equal to nothing so that's it uh, I think we can try to Build this. Let me think. Check the parameters here. Dulling, epsilon greedy. We won't use this in this tutorial. Dulling, soft update false. Double deep network true. So okay. 
yeah i can try to check if if my code works and there is no issues if an object has no object memory so remember uh Okay, we move to our member function and yeah, I think I, I to do this like that. Yeah, of memory store and else we use a simple deq. Okay, so as you can see, it works for me and. Now I'll try two examples to train on sa same card pool balancing game where uh, I trained our agent for 1000 steps. I'll train two examples right now. So one will be with prioritized experience replay enabled and another with it disabled. So both agents will be trained with double dwelling deep queue network, epsilon greed update and stop update disabled. So as you can see the training process already started and the results are quite nice here as you can see but i won't record it while training because yeah it, it might take some time so i'll stop the recording right now and we'll come back to the results so so welcome back my training process has finished already and here i have our results so first let's look at our results where we were training our agent without per results looks very similar as they were in my previous tutorial best average score our agent could hit was around 1000 well that's quite impressive also but now let's look at our agent while it was using prioritized experience replay memory so it will be this one i can make it larger a little bit and as we can see difference is as day and night our fifth state smooth average was close so close somewhere around 1700 points per game while without per prioritized experience replay our average score was a little more than 1000 so from these graphs we can say that performance showed that prioritized experience replay really, really translates into a faster learning and higher performance what's more it's complementary to dueling double deep q network and if we would train our agent for much longer and with larger prioritized memory buffer maybe it would reach even better results who knows up to this point we were working with quite simple environments well we reached quite nice results as you can see right now here with only four state variables and we were able to quite fast train our agent so now let's try to take this agent to next level and train our agent with 3d image data so if you want to see how we'll do that see you in our next tutorial so because it took me for too long for right now to train so I think we'll see you in a next tutorial. I hope this was useful tutorial for you. Maybe it was too much complicated with prioritized experience replay method, but if you will get deeper to it, you might understand. So thank you all again for watching. See you in a next tutorial. Goodbye. By the way, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.